Happy Thursday. I hope you guys had a good first week of Advent, are having a good first week of Advent. Um, we had a lot of fun putting together Advent packets and members of the Christian Education Committee helped to deliver those to some of the fam to the families in the church of young children. And I, um, I got to see some college students this weekend. We got to space out. It wasn't this weekend. I think it was earlier this week. Time is jello. We got to space out in a backyard at the Hodges house and have some time to bond together. And I've been able to visit some driveways this week to help write liturgy for our joy gift service that's coming up. So this week after Thanksgiving, it feels like I have had a lot to be thankful for that I have been able to engage with some of the children and some of the college students and youth um, this week as we connect and get ready for Advent and for Joy Gift. Um, and somehow this morning, I woke up feeling kind of overwhelmed at everything that was happening and everything that was supposed to happen. And for a change, listening to the news offered me a little sliver of hope this morning. They said a vaccine is finally coming and We've been talking about it for a while. We've been hearing about it for a while. And somehow this morning, it just felt a little more real. And somehow this morning, the idea of holding on until spring didn't feel so far away. And it felt like there would be an after the pandemic time period, which some days I was beginning to wonder if we were going to have a feeling that it was ever going to be on the other side. Um, and I, I realized this morning that when I heard that about the vaccine coming and being on the other side of it next year sometime, it just felt like whew, I could exhale and relax a little bit in a way that I hadn't realized I was holding my breath. And I remembered seeing the bright, bright moon last night. I hope if you haven't seen it, you get to go out and see it before it gets smaller again. There were these huge, really bright clouds last night. And I looked up and as I looked up, the cloud moved away just enough that this huge moon that I could even see the craters of, it was so bright. And it just made me stop on the sidewalk and just inhale this crisp night that was filled with this beautiful moon. It really helped to lift my spirits. And then I came in and we were putting away some of our summer clothes and pulling out some of our winter clothes because it got cold. And I pulled out this sweater that I loved. It's my favorite sweater and it's so soft. And holding that sweater and just feeling the softness felt like, it almost felt like a hug from a friend because it was such a familiar sweater and such a loved sweater. And I got to just, whew, there's little glimpses of hope in the bright moon and in my favorite sweater. And it made me think that when we see those slivers of hope throughout the day or the evening, that we need to grab those slivers of hope with both hands so that we can hang on to the light that we're finding. And on those days that it doesn't seem like you can find a sliver of hope anywhere, text a friend or call someone maybe a member of the church, maybe a neighbor, but reach out and say, I just need a little sliver of hope today. Do you have one? And I bet you, even if they didn't know they had one, that when they know that you need one, they're going to shine a little bit of their light into your day. And you'll both end up feeling 
more hopeful and lighter on the other side of that. When we reach out in our darkness, it gives someone else's light another reason to shine besides their own, and it helps to steady their flame too. So I urge you this week, if you are feeling hopeful and you are feeling the light that is shining within you, share it with somebody. And if the light that is inside of you is not shining so bright this week, I urge you to call somebody or text somebody and say, I need you to shine a little bit of your light into my day. How is your day? Talk to me about what's going on with you. Because in those connections, we are going to see the light that God has placed in each one of us to shine for those around us. I love that in community, our light can shine brighter. Um, Aaron told a story a long time ago, and it's really stuck with me, of fireflies. Do you remember if you are at least as old as I am? Do you remember catching fireflies in a, in a glass jar and watching them and it would stay lit? And if you looked inside, each firefly wasn't lit all the time, but together the light continued to shine. Our lights can't shine bright every single day. But when we are together with other members of the family of God in spirit, in community, through phone calls, through texts, through letters, through all the ways that we are finding to connect with each other, we can shine our light while somebody else takes a break and then they can shine their light when ours isn't lit. So I urge you to find a person to share your light with this week. And I thought of this song that I wanted to sing today and share with you and sing along if you know what it is, if you know the words. It's called Down to the River to Pray. Because no matter what, we can come together and pray. I hope you have a fabulous week. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Creator God, thank you that no matter who we are, no matter what language we speak, no matter where we are, you have filled us with your light. Help us to remember our light when it gets covered up and help us to shine our light into the lives of other people so that together we can shine brightly and warm one another's hearts. In your holy name we pray. Amen. I hope you have a great Thursday.